Greetings and welcome to today's 10 minute painting lesson. We're going to begin here with a large damp square headed brush and an eclectic mix of colors. I'm using a mixture of primary blue, primary red, titanium white, and Mars black. I'm moving my hand incredibly quickly to ensure that I blend all of them together softly, but I'm also using a very soft touch of my brush to ensure that I'm not rendering a streaky aesthetic. If you want it to look very smooth, I would implore you to use less pressure with your brush. Now, I want pieces of red, of blue to stand out, but I really want a lot of a purple in this. This is essentially cherry blossom trees in the far distance. So to render a real pink or a purple, I would implore you to mix a bit of primary red with primary blue. Now I have a fairly soft initial base layer there, and I'm going to switch over to my smaller square headed brush. Here I'm using a mixture of Mars black and burnt umber, and I'm beginning to place the tree in our foreground. I have a bit of water on my brush, which is helping me spread the paint farther than you'd normally be able to, and it's allowing my lines to be a little bit sharper as well. You can see that we're getting a very distinct stark application, but as the pigment begins to run out on my brush, things will get much more soft, they'll blend much more in the background, and you'll see the benefit of that very, very soon. Right now we're just kind of branching off and creating some additional pieces. Now here you can really see that the paint is dissipating on the brush. It's blending more with the purple which is actually great because these trees that we're rendering right now, they're a little bit farther away and they should adopt more of the color in the background. Optically they will kind of blend together. You don't want the stark lines, you don't want the hypersaturated pigments and you want more of a mixed value. That's a good rule in general. Subjects in the far distance should be desaturated and they should all kind of blend together. Whereas subjects in the foreground should be a lot sharper, they should have more saturation, and they should have a higher value. Now, while we let that dry before we begin to implement some of the detail, I'm going to work on the base of our waterfall area. I'm using that same large square headed brush. This time, however, I'm using a mixture of Mars black and burnt umber. Now, I'm not too worried about creating a consistent stroke or pattern in this. What we're doing right now is just creating a base layer. We'll be putting a lot of water on top of it very shortly. So we won't be able to see a lot of it, but it's important that we have this base layer on here to show through a couple portions of the water. We also need to let this area fully dry before we begin to implement any of that water, otherwise the colors will blend and we'll just get a lot of dark grays. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to go back to my trees, and I'm going to do so with an old square-headed brush. You can see the edges of it, that they all look kind of ratty and very bristly, right? The idea here is that because the bristles are all so broken down because they move out in different directions, when you make a dabbing motion with them, you render a litany of different implications. These look very much like foliage, and we're just creating different clusters of foliage. You want to create clusters in different sizes and shapes, that'll make it look much more interesting and real. And I'm starting off here with a pink, it is a mixture of titanium white and primary red, but it's still blending a little bit with the background, so we're not getting a very stark color. It does, however, stand out from what we did previously, which is really nice because we're already building depth, and I think that having that darker purple, the reds, the blues in the background is really helping it to stand out. Then I'm taking more of a titanium white heavy mixture of that pink, and I'm beginning to apply some highlights to the edges of these clusters as well. Just the areas where we feel more light will be adopted. This is going to help build up a lot of depth, as depth is created through a mixture of values. You want your highlights, you want your middle tones, and you want your dark tones. Through all of those, you will render something that looks three-dimensional. Now from there, I'm adding some highlights to our trees with a mixture of titanium white and burnt umber. I'm using a small square-headed brush, and I'm using a bit of a tapping motion when applying this highlight to ensure that we're rendering more of a 
rough aesthetic. It'll look a lot more like bark when you do that. And it'll just look much more real. It'll have a good texture to it rather than running a clean, smooth line down the edge of your tree. And by using the smaller square headed brush, we're able to implement a lot of detail in that process as well. So now that the majority of our waterfall area has dried, I'm going to put in some horizontal lines, which are the areas where the water is going to fall and pool. Then it's going to fall from those areas. So you can see now I'm beginning to drag some of it downwards. The brush is fairly wet and I wanted to do this to ensure that we moved the paint very smoothly. I didn't want a grainy effect and the more water you use, the less of a grainy effect you'll render, but it'll also make it transparent. So you'll see the black through a lot of it, which means we'll have to do a couple of layers in different areas. However, we do want that black to show through in some areas because it'll help create a lot of depth and it shows that there is rock behind all of this water that is falling. Now, a lot of this water is a mixture of titanium white and primary blue. And as you can see, it all works fairly nice together. The blue next to the pink, they are great colors together. They really help each other pop. And I think they, they complement each other really well. Now it's also worth noting that different portions of this waterfall are longer than others and you can make this so much more intricate than I did. I just did it in this fashion because I only had 10 minutes, but you can do a lot with it. I'm not done with the water at that point, but I need to let it dry a little bit so that I don't kind of create a lot of mud. I do want to work with the detail and we just need to let that dry. In the meantime, I'm putting more of a pure uh, primary blue in the water down below and blending that out with a little bit of titanium white. I'm doing this in a plethora of horizontal strokes and trying to leave some areas brighter than others. Then I'm going to go back into the waterfall and begin to re-implement some more of those blue highlights. This time we're using a little bit more of our primary blue and I'm just trying to switch things up here and there. I'm trying to keep it diverse, trying to keep it interesting. And the best way to do that is to do it through a couple of different layers. Now here we're throwing in a little bit of added white. I generally add the white more to the tops of the waterfalls and then it dissipates as we get farther down into the bottom portions. And I know that can be a little bit difficult at first. Don't worry about it if it isn't something you're great at, but it is something to keep in the back of your head for future painting endeavors as well. Then I'm going to take my older square headed brush. I have a good amount of titanium white on it and I'm going to begin implementing some additional detail work. Now because it has all of these bristles that leaf off in varying directions when you make a stroke motion with it, it makes a litany of strokes which is fantastic here because of course it renders all of these streams of water. I'm also using it to apply the splashing water here at the bottom of the waterfall. So it's a very diverse brush and you can make one yourself by just peeling back the bristles on an old or on a square headed brush and applying pressure. So easy to make and you can do it with a cheap brush, you can do it with an old brush, you can make it fairly efficiently, or you could use a store-bought fan brush as well. It'll have a fairly similar effect. Now, I lost a clip, and I do apologize. It was just a small bush in the bottom left-hand corner. We just put in a silhouette with a very dark purple. Don't you worry about it. But from there, we're getting back to our waterfall. I'm applying some additional highlights, and you'll notice that we didn't just start the waterfall and finish it. We went back to it, we went back to it. That's what painting is. It's a lot of foundation layering process of adding, adding, adding. There you could see now we're adding the highlights to the bottom of the bush in the bottom left hand corner and it follows the same rule. We needed to let that darker area dry a little bit so that the pink didn't blend with it and that way we got the saturated pink that we were able to render there. Now here I'm going to extend the tree over portions of our waterfall, but to do that we needed to let our waterfall dry so that the colors there didn't blend as well. So again, it goes back to starting something, letting it dry, seeing how we like it, then going back and fixing it up. It, that's, that's really why you shouldn't quit midway through a painting. Feel it out, see how you like it, you know, spend some time with it. 
remove yourself, let things dry, go back, rework on them. Um, because generally, we'll get frustrated in the moment when we really shouldn't be frustrated at all because we needed to build that unesthetic base first. Now, that was what it looked like at 10 minutes, but I did have a couple of additional ideas and I wanted to share them with you, so I sped it up so I didn't waste too much of your time here today. What we're doing though is adding some additional rocks here into the bottom of the water. I'm just using a pure Mars black and I let the pigment dissipate as we got closer to the waterfall because more of the rocks will be covered with fog. Then I'm adding some highlights to the rocks with a titanium white and I'm letting it blend into a bit of a gray. Then I'm throwing some additional foliage and pieces of our tree over to the far left which again will overlap portions of our waterfall. Then I'm adding in some additional highlights, building up our contrast just to ensure we get a good amount of depth here within our tree. Now there we have it, there is our 10 to 13-ish minute painting. I truly hope you've enjoyed. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners. If you'd like hour-long lessons, they are also in the description, and you can actually do another cherry blossom piece like this. Now, with that being said, I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching, and above all, as always, stay creative.